Fourth verse of the Tao Te Ching. Quote, The Tao is empty but inexhaustible, bottomless, the ancestor of it all. Within it, the sharp edges become smooth, the twisted knots loosen, the sun is softened by a cloud, the dust settles into place. It is hidden but always present. I do not know who gave birth to it. It seems to be the common ancestor of all, the father of things. End quote. Living infinitely. The Tao is the source of all life, yet it is empty and limitless and cannot be constrained, quantified, or measured. This life-giving energy of creation provides a profound source of joy that's accessible at all times. If you live from an infinite perspective, you'll relinquish the idea that your own identity is the physical body in which you progress from birth to death. In your totality, you're an infinite being disguised as a person existing in the world of sharp edges and twisted knots, as this verse refers to. Coalescing within and around you at all times is the invisible, life-giving force of the Tao. It is inexhaustible. It is bottomless. It cannot be depleted. This fourth verse of the Tao invites you to consider rearranging your thoughts about who you are. It seems to be saying that cultivating an awareness of the infinite aspect of yourself is the way to tap into the limitless source of creative energy that flows through you. For example, you may want to help some less fortunate people improve their day-to-day -day existence, but you don't believe that you have the time or the energy to do so because of who you are and what you're presently doing. As you relax your hold on the idea of yourself as the job you do or the life you're living, and seek to acquaint yourself with the limitless creative energy that's a part of you, the time and energy you require will appear. Imagine yourself helping others, guided by the infinite aspect of yourself, will generate behavior and actions that complement your vision through the common ancestor of the Tao. Ultimately, you'll cultivate an absolute knowing that whatever assistance you need is right here and right now, in front of, in back of, above, and below you. It is empty, yet very much present. It is, as Lao Tzu reminds you, inexhaustible, bottomless, the ancestor of it all. Awareness of the omnipresence of the Tao means that thoughts of shortages or lacks aren't prevalent. Beliefs such as, there's no way this will happen, it's not my destiny, or with my luck, things could never work out, cease to be entertained. Instead, you begin to expect that what you imagine for yourself is not only on its way, it's already here. This new self-portrait based on the cooperative presence of the invisible Tao elevates you to living an inspired life, that is, one of being in spirit or in unending touch with the Tao. When you live infinitely, the rewards are a sense of peaceful joy because you know that all is in order. This is what I imagine Lao Tzu's ancient words mean in our modern era. First, consider all things that seem to be a problem from the perspective of the eternal Tao. Believing that there's a shortage of prosperity is a signal to think in terms of the inexhaustible source, the Tao. Just like everything else on our planet, money is available in limitless qualities. Know this and connect to the bottomless supply. Do it first in your thoughts by affirming, everything I need now is here. Prosperity thoughts are energetic instructions to access your infinite self so actions will follow them. Take this same approach, staying in harmony with the Tao, to all of your problems, for there's an all-encompassing supply of well-being to partner with. So rather than giving energy to illness and perceived misfortunes, stay with the Tao. Stay with what can never be used up. Stay with that which is the father of all things, the creative source of it all. It will work with and for you as you have it in your thoughts, then in your feelings, and finally, in your actions. And secondly, be an infinite observer. When acknowledged as a sign of change, worry is transitory. It's simply part of the world of the changing. If you view your life from the vantage point of an infinite observer, concerns, anxieties, and struggles blend into the eternal mix. From this ageless perspective, picture how important the things you feel depressed about now will be in a hundred, a thousand, a million, or an uncountable number of years. Remember that you, like the infinite Tao from which you originated, are part of an eternal reality. Rearrange your thoughts to practice thinking in alignment with the Tao. With the assistance of the eternal Tao, all of the sharp edges of life smooth out, the knots loosen, 
and the dust settles. Try it. Do the Tao now. Pick a situation today. Any situation will work. And instead of verbally responding, be silent and listen to your thoughts. For example, in a social gathering or business meeting, choose to seek the emptiness found in silence in order to be aware of your infinite self. Invite it to let you know when or whether to respond. If you find your worldly ego interpreting or judging, then just observe that without criticizing or changing it, you'll begin to find more and more situations where it feels peaceful and joyful to be without response, just to be in the infinity that's hidden but always present. You might want to duplicate this advice of my teacher, Nisargadatta Maharaj, and post it conspicuously so that you can read it daily, as I do. Quote, Wisdom is knowing I am nothing. Love is knowing I am everything. And in between the two, my life moves. Unquote. And while you're living, stay as close to love as you can. Fifth verse of the Tao Te Ching. Quote, Heaven and earth are impartial. They see the ten thousand things as straw dogs. The sage is not sentimental. He treats all his people as straw dogs. The sage is like heaven and earth. To him, none are especially dear, nor is there anyone he disfavors. He gives and gives without condition, offering his treasures to everyone. Between heaven and earth is a space like a bellows, empty and inexhaustible. The more it is used, the more it produces. Hold on to the center. Man was made to sit quietly and find the truth within. Unquote. Living impartially. The Tao does not discriminate, period. Like heaven and earth, it is impartial. The Tao is the source of all, the great invisible provider. It doesn't show preference by giving energy to some while depriving others. Rather, the basic life-sustaining components of air, sunshine, atmosphere, and rain are provided for all on our planet. By choosing to harmonize our inner and outer consciousness with this powerful feature of the Tao, we can realize the true self that we are. The true self is our unsentimental sage aspect that lives harmoniously with the Tao. This aspect doesn't view life in one form as more deserving than another, and it refuses to play favorites. Or, as Lao Tzu states, he treats all his people as straw dogs. Lao Tzu uses this term to describe how the Tao, as well as the enlightened ones, treats the 10,000 things that comprise the world of the manifest. In Stephen Mitchell's translation of the Tao Te Ching, he explains that straw dogs were ritual objects venerated before the ceremony, but afterward abandoned and trampled underfoot. In other words, Taoism reveres and respects existence impartially as an ebb and flow that is to be revered and then released. With impartial awareness, the sage genuinely sees the sacredness within all the straw dogs in this ceremony we call life. This fifth verse encourages us to be aware of this unbiased source and, as a bonus, to enjoy the paradoxical nature of the Tao. The more rapport we have with the energy of the Tao and the more we're living from its all-creating perspective, the more it's available to us. It's impossible to use it up. If we consume more, we simply receive more. But if we attempt to hoard it, we'll experience shortages ourselves, along with the failures of having even a wisp of understanding. The Tao and its inexhaustible powers paradoxically disappear when we attempt to exclude anyone from its unprejudiced nature. The varied forms of life are illusory, as far as the Tao is concerned, so no one is special or better than anyone else. This sentiment is echoed in the Christian scriptures, quote, God sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous, Matthew 5.45, unquote. Practicing impartiality is a way to incorporate this fifth verse of the Tao Te Ching into your life and to practice its wisdom in today's world. To that end, this is what I believe Lao Tzu was trying to impart to us from his 2,500-year-old vantage point. First, stay in harmony with the impartial essence of the Tao in all of your thoughts and all of your behaviors. When you have a thought that excludes others, You've elected to see yourself as special and therefore deserving of exceptional favor from your source of being. The moment you've promoted yourself to this category, you've elevated your self-importance above those whom you've decided are less deserving. Thinking this way will cause you to lose the all-encompassing power of the Tao. Organizations, including religious groups, 
that designate some members as favored aren't centered in the Tao. No matter how much they attempt to convince themselves and others of their spiritual connection, the act of exclusion and partiality eliminates their functioning from their true self. In other words, if a thought or behavior divides us, it's not of God. If it unites us, it is of God. Stay centered on this Tao that resides within you, Lao Tzu advises, and you'll never have a thought that isn't in harmony with spirit. And secondly, offer your treasures to everyone. This is what the Tao is doing at every moment, offering to all the entire spectrum of creation. Think of this as a simple three-step process. One, eliminate as many judgments of others in your thoughts as possible. The simplest, most natural way to accomplish this is to see yourself in everyone. Remember that you and those you judge share one thing in common, the Tao. So rather than viewing appearances, which are really nothing more than straw dogs, see the unfolding of the Tao in those you encounter, and your criticisms and labels will dissolve. And two, remove the word special from your vocabulary when you refer to yourself or others. If anyone is special, then we all are. And if we're all exceptional, then we don't need a word like that to define us, since it clearly implies that some are more favored than others. And three, Finally, implement the third step of this process by extending generosity through living the Tao impartially and connecting with the inner space of being the Tao. In this space, you'll be able to be unbiased about your possessions, recognizing that they're not exclusively yours, but are rather a part of the entirety. By unconditionally sharing and giving, you'll thrill at the experience of living the Tao and being unprejudiced. The Tao is your truth. It resides within you. Quietly be in the peace and joy of connecting with the inexhaustible Tao. Do the Tao now. As many times as possible today, decide to approach interactions or situations involving other people with a completely fair mindset, which you allow and trust to guide your responses. Do this as often as you can for an entire day with individuals, groups, friends, family members, or strangers. Create a short sentence that you silently repeat to continuously remind yourself that you're approaching this situation with an unbiased attitude, such as, Guide me right now, Tao, Holy Spirit, guide me now, or Holy Spirit, help us now. Keeping this brief sentence on a loop in your mind will prevent judgment from habitually surfacing. But even more appealing is the feeling of relaxation and openness to whatever wants to happen in those moments of impartiality. Sixth verse of the Tao Te Ching, quote, The spirit that never dies is called the mysterious feminine. Although she becomes the whole universe, her immaculate purity is never lost. Although she assumes countless forms, her true identity remains intact. The gateway to the mysterious female is called the root of creation. Listen to her voice. Hear it echo through creation. Without fail, she reveals her presence. Without fail, she brings us to our own perfection. Although it is invisible, it endures. It will never end. Unquote. Living Creatively In this sixth verse, Lao Tzu refers to an eternal and indescribable force of creation that continuously gives birth to new life. He tells us that this mysterious female energy continually reveals itself in perfection, and he invites us to an awareness of that voice of creation echoing throughout life in a myriad of ways. Living creatively is how I describe existing with a conscious awareness of the presence of this feminine principle. This mysterious female is always birthing, and the Tao Te Ching speaks of the gateway to her as the root of creation. It's telling us that we have the ability to tap into this unlimited field and co-create, or as I've said, live creatively through the Tao. The never-dying formative energy is both our heritage and our destiny, functioning whether we're conscious of it or not. What awareness accomplishes through practicing the Tao is to let us participate in the process, which in turn leads us toward the wholeness that is our ultimate earthbound task. Although his writings are almost 3,000 years old, Lao Tzu is offering 21st century advice here with a message that's as timeless and never-ending as the Tao itself. Words may change, but be assured that the feminine energy can and will bring you to your own perfection. 
If you choose to be aware of the inherent creativity that resonates deep within you, where the invisible Tao sings the loudest, you'll assist the birthing of new ideas, new accomplishments, new projects, and new ways of understanding your life. In Deng Ming Dao's 365 Dao Daily Meditations, the divine feminine energy is equated with the sound of birds soaring and gliding over a vast landscape. Quote, You can feel this in your life. Events will take on a perfect momentum, a glorious cadence. You can feel it in your body. The energy will rise up in you in a thrilling crescendo, setting your very nerves aglow. You can feel it in your spirit. You will enter a state of such perfect grace that you will resound over the landscape of reality like an ephemeral bird song. When Tao comes to you in this way, ride it for all that you are worth. Don't interfere. Don't stop. Don't try to direct it. Let it flow and follow it as long as the song lasts. Follow. Just follow. End quote. Here are some thoughts for living creatively. First, know that you are a divine creation birthed not by your parents, but by the great spiritual divine mother, the Tao. When you're in touch with the energy of your origin, you offer the world your authentic intelligence and talents and behaviors. You're co-creating with the you that originated in the Tao and the very measure of your essence. The Tao is not confused about what to create and how to go about it, as this is your legacy from the mysterious feminine. Listen to your inner callings. Ignore how others might want to direct your life energies and allow yourself to radiate outward what you feel so profoundly and deeply within yourself. There is a reservoir of talent, ability, and intelligence inside of you that's as endless and inexhaustible as the Tao itself. It must be that way because you are what you came from, and where you came from is this all-encompassing, endlessly creative Divine Mother, the mysterious feminine of the Tao. Whatever you feel within you as your calling, whatever makes you feel alive, Know in your heart that this excitement is all the evidence you need to have your inner passion become reality. This is precisely how creation works, and it's that energy that harmonizes with the Tao. And secondly, be creative in your thoughts, in your feelings, and in all of your actions. Apply your own uniqueness to everything you undertake. Whatever you feel compelled to do, be it write music, design software, do floral arrangements, clean teeth, or drive a taxi— do it with your unique flair. Being creative means trusting your inner callings, ignoring criticism or judgment, and releasing resistance to your natural talents. Re-listen to this sixth verse, paying particular attention to these words. Without fail, she reveals her presence. Without fail, she brings us to our own perfection. Then choose to let go of the doubt and fear you've harbored within you regarding your capacity to harmonize with the creative power, a power that's not only greater than your individual life, but is life itself. As the great 14th century Sufi poet Hafiz reminds all of us, quote, Just sit there right now. Don't do a thing. Just rest. For your separation from God, from love, is the hardest work in this world. Unquote. When you reconnect to your Divine Mother, you'll be living creatively. You will, in fact, be living the Tao. Do the Tao now. Today, notice babies and small children. Look for the mysterious feminine nature in little boys and girls who haven't yet become so attuned to cultural and societal demands that their true selves are hidden. Can you see some whose inherent nature is intact? Notice what seems to be their natural character or their gift from the Tao. Then try to recall yourself as a child when the natural Tao-given self was unaware of the ego self the time before you believed that acquisitions or power were important, who were you? Who are you now? Yes, today, spend a few moments with a young child and contemplate his or her connection to the Tao and how it unfolds perfectly without any interference. Seventh verse of the Tao Te Ching. Quote, Heaven is eternal. The earth endures. Why do heaven and earth last forever? They do not live for themselves only. This is the secret of their durability. For this reason, the sage puts himself last and so ends up ahead. He stays a witness to life, so he endures. Serve the needs of others, and all your own needs will be fulfilled. Through selfless action, fulfillment is attained. Unquote. 
Living Beyond Ego. The opening line of this seventh verse of the Tao Te Ching is a reminder that the Tao, the source of heaven and earth, is eternal. By extension, the original nature of life is everlasting and enduring. There is a quality that supports this durability, and that quality responds when we live from our Tao center rather than from our worldly ego center. Identifying exclusively with the physicality of life and basing our existence on acquiring and achieving things disregards our infinite nature and limits our awareness of downness. In such a finite system, it therefore seems logical to strive for possessions and accomplishments. Being civilized in most cultures primarily constitutes being consumed with attaining success in the acquisition of power and things, which supposedly will provide happiness and prevent unhappiness. The primary idea is of a self who's a separate being in a separate body with a name and with cultural and biological data that are similar in values and patriotism to others. The Tao, particularly in this seventh verse, is suggesting that we update those notions and choose to exist for more than ourselves or our tribe, that is, to radically change our thoughts in order to change our lives. Lao Tzu says the secret of the ineffable nature of the eternal Tao is that it isn't identified with our possessions or in asking anything of its endless creations. The Tao is a giving machine that never runs out of gifts to offer, yet it asks nothing in return. Because of this natural tendency to live for others, the Tao teaches that it can never die. Giving and immortality, then, go hand in hand. The sage who grasps this everlasting nature of the Tao has gone beyond false identification with the ego and instead has a living connection to the Tao. This person puts others first, asks nothing in return, and wholeheartedly serves. In this way, the sage lives the ultimate paradox of the Tao. By giving without asking, he attracts everything that he's capable of handling or needing. By putting himself last, the sage ends up ahead. By putting others before himself, he endures, just like the Tao. The sage emulates the natural philanthropy of the Tao, and all of his needs are fulfilled in the process. The ego is a demanding force that's never satisfied. It constantly requires that we seek more money, more power, more acquisitions, more glory, more prestige to provide the fuel that it thinks it must have. But living a Tao-centered life rather than an ego-centered one removes us from the rat race as it offers inner peace and satisfying fulfillment. This is what I believe the wisdom of this verse of the Tao Te Ching is saying for the 21st century. First, make an attempt to reverse ego's hold on you by practicing the Tao's teaching to serve the needs of others and all your own needs will be fulfilled. Generously thinking of and serving others will lead to matching your behaviors with the perpetual rhythm of the Tao. Then its power will flow freely, leading to a fulfilling life. Ego wants the opposite, however, as it tells you to think of yourself first and get yours before someone else beats you to it. The main problem with listening to ego is that you're always caught in the trap of striving and never arriving. Thus, you can never feel complete. As you reach out in thoughts and behaviors, you activate loving energy, which is synonymous with giving. Put others ahead of you in as many ways as possible by affirming, I see the sacred, invisible source of all in its eternal state of giving and asking nothing in return. I vow to be this too in my thoughts and in my behavior. When you're tempted to focus on your personal successes and defeats, shift your attention in that very moment to a less fortunate individual. You'll feel connected to life as well as more satisfied than when you're dwelling on your own circumstances. Imagine what it would be like if you dismissed ego's hold on you, serving others, and watching how all that you give returns to you tenfold. The poet Hafiz expresses this attitude perfectly. Quote, Everyone is God speaking. Why not be polite and listen to him? Unquote. And secondly, stop the chase and be a witness. The more you pursue desires, the more they'll elude you. Try letting life come to you and begin to notice the clues that what you crave is on its way. You're in a constant state of receiving because of the ceaseless generosity of the eternal Tao. The air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat, the sunshine that warms you, the nutrients that keep your body alive, and even the thoughts that fill your mind are all gifts from the eternal Tao. Stay appreciative of all that you receive 
knowing that it flows from an all-providing source, stop the chase and become a witness. Soothe your demanding habits by refusing to continue running after more. By letting go, you let God. And even more significantly, you become more like God and less like the ego with its lifetime practice of edging God out, E-G-O. Do the Tao now. Be on the lookout for ego demands for an entire day. Decide to diffuse as many of them as you can comfortably, perhaps by assigning them an intensity grade. Living beyond ego situations that are easy to accomplish gets a low number, while those requests that are difficult to quell get a higher number. For example, let's say that your mate drives right on by or you watch him or her take a different route than you ordinarily do. Silently witness the degree of discomfort with your decision not to say anything. Did ego let you know its preference? Or if you have a conversational opportunity to display your specialized knowledge or describe a situation where you were the recipient of honor or success, note how uncomfortable your decision to remain quiet felt. Again, did ego let you know its preference? As Lao Tzu says in this verse, quote, Through selfless action, fulfillment is attained. By holding back ego's demands, even for a few moments, you'll feel more and more fulfilled, unquote. That's the message of this verse of the Tao Te Ching. Eighth verse of the Tao Te Ching, quote, The supreme good is like water, which nourishes all things without trying to. It flows to low places, loathed by all men. Therefore, it is like the Tao. Live in accordance with the nature of things. In dwelling, be close to the land. In meditation, go deep in the heart. In dealing with others, be gentle and kind. Stand by your word. Govern with equity. Be timely in choosing the right moment. One who lives in accordance with nature does not go against the way of things. He moves in harmony with the present moment, always knowing the truth of just what to do. Unquote. Living in the flow. The Tao and water are synonymous, according to the teachings of Lao Tzu. You are water. Water is you. Think about the first nine months of your life after conception. You lived in and were nourished by amniotic fluid, which is truly unconditional love flowing into you, flowing as you. You are now 75% water, and your brain is 85% water, and the rest is simply muscled water. Think about the mysterious, magical nature of this liquid energy that we take for granted. Try to squeeze it, and it eludes us. Relax our hands into it, and we experience it readily. If it stays stationary, it will become stagnant. If it's allowed to flow, it will stay pure. It does not seek the high spots to be above it all, but settles for the lowest places. It gathers into rivers, lakes, and streams, courses to the sea, and then evaporates to fall again as rain. It maps out nothing, and it plays no favorites. It doesn't intend to provide sustenance to the animals and plants. It has no plans to irrigate the fields, to slake our thirst, or to provide the opportunity to swim, sail, ski, and scuba dive. These are some of the benefits that come naturally from water simply doing what it does and being what it is. The Tao asks you to clearly see the parallels between you and this naturally flowing substance that allows life to sustain itself. Live as water lives, since you are water. Become as contented as is the fluid that animates and supports you. Let your thoughts and behaviors move smoothly in accordance with the nature of all things. It's natural for you to be gentle, to allow others to be free to go where they're inclined to go, and to be as they need to be without interference from you. It is natural to trust in the eternal flow, to be true to your inner inclinations and stick to your words. It's natural to treat everyone as an equal. All of these lessons can be derived by observing how water, which sustains all life, behaves. It simply moves and the benefits it provides occur from it being what it is in harmony with the present moment and knowing the truth of precisely how to behave. What follows is what Lao Tzu might say to you based upon his writing of the eighth verse of the Tao Te Ching. First, when you're free to flow as water, you're free to communicate naturally. Information is exchanged and knowledge advances in a way that benefits everyone. Be careful not to assign yourself a place of importance above anyone else. Be receptive to everyone, particularly those who may not routinely receive respect, such as the uneducated or the homeless or troubled members of our society. Go to the low places loathed by all men. 
and have an open mind when you're there. Look for the Tao in everyone you encounter and make a special effort to have acceptance, gentleness, and kindness course through you to others. By not being irritating, you'll be received with respect. By making every effort to avoid controlling the lives of others, you'll be in peaceful harmony with the natural order of the Tao. This is the way you nourish others without trying. Be like water which creates opportunities for swimming and fishing and surfing and drinking and wading and sprinkling and floating and an endless list of benefits by not trying to do anything other than simply flow. And secondly, let your thoughts float freely. Forget about fighting life or trying to be something else. Rather, allow yourself to be like the material compound that comprises every aspect of your physical being. In The Hidden Messages of Water, Masaru Emoto explains that we are water, and water wants to be free. The author has thoroughly explored the ways in which this compound reacts, noting that by respecting and loving it, we can literally change its crystallization process. If kept in a container with the words love or thank you or you're beautiful imprinted on it, water becomes beautifully radiant crystals. Yet if the words on the container are you fool, Satan, or I will kill you, the crystals break apart, are distorted, and seem confused. The implications of Emoto's work are stupendous. Since our consciousness is located within us, and we're essentially water, then if we're out of balance in our intentions, it's within the realm of possibility that our intentions can impact the entire planet and beyond in a destructive way. As our creator, the eternal Tao, might put it, water of life am I, poured forth for thirsty men. Do the Tao now. Drink water silently today while reminding yourself with each sip to nourish others in the same life-flourishing ways that streams give to the animals and rain delivers to the plants. Note how many places water is there for you, serving you by flowing naturally. Say a prayer of gratitude for this life-sustaining, always-flowing substance.